Um, what I have to share this morning is literally something that just happened, but it's totally um, a part of what I wanted to talk about today. And when I put out yesterday, I had to, I was trying to figure out what it was. When I put out this um, seminar, so today is going to be totally different. It's really more of a personal development series. Um, I think if you've been near me, you've heard me talk in the capacity of it but not necessarily know where it came from or um, that I, I, I am a motivational speaker, do speak, and I see and hear things and sometimes know how to react or respond. And sometimes even out of my own personal self, not understanding how much of a gift in which that is. Um, and so I usually pick topics of things that are around me so to make sure that they are really, really impactful to people in the world. Like, don't just be talking about something. Have something in which to give. And so the very first time I put this together, I was like, okay, I know what I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to say you can have a new beginning. That's what I was going to talk about. You can have a new beginning. And then I laid down with it, and then I was about to post it this evening, I mean, last night, before I went in with my daughter. But something said, hold on, pause. Don't say that. Like, that's not the title. And I said, okay, well, what is the title? Okay, just keep on coming around. And then I came up with, the heart of a lion is different. And I was like, okay, well, what, what does that mean to you? Because people say that, right? They say that, they push with that. Um, there's even a song. <laughs> I am a tiger. You remember that song? There is a song that's on out here, right? And then when you hear that song, even the music that's behind it makes you, I don't know if you've heard that, maybe I'm showing my age, but if you haven't, go listen to it. The eye of the tiger, it makes you go. And I'm going to pump and I'm going to push, right? And I was like, okay, well, how do people get to that point? Like you hear the eye of the tiger. How do you get there? How does one get there? So then the end of yesterday, um, Pink Cup, Brittany, asked the question of like literally how, like do you have days that you typically feel like you don't want to work? You don't get that together. You just don't want to. So then what helped me to stop in that space was to say, if that qu when a question is asked, it's usually not one person that has that type of question. It's usually a whole bunch. But sometimes people feel very, very, I don't know if I want to ask that because then that makes me feel less than to ask a question in that state. But actually, a lot more people than you realize actually usually have that question. So while I'm preparing for today, so I'm going to share my own personal something that happened to me. Um, I'm, I'm, I am a morning person. I was not a morning person. That is not where I started. I started to realize that I had missed out on things in the morning. You know how that thing is, the early bird gets the worm? Well, I have learned over time that literally the more successful I got, the more I climbed corporate ladders, the more I climbed business infrastructure, that literally I was missing the dango worm because things happened in the morning that I had no idea of because I was asleep. Then I equated sleep, not just being in the physical being sleep, but literally mentally sleep. I wasn't taking advantage of everything that happens when you get up in the morning, when you prep, when you prime your day. And I would hear people say things about what their morning ritual, everybody hear that morning ritual, morning routine was, right? But then some routines did not necessarily match the direction in which I was going. So I started to look deeper and try to figure out, well, what of those people that I'm looking for? I am a millionaire. I am a billionaire. I can do these things. What do their lives look like? Did it look like in mirror my own? And I realized it did not. It looked more near it. As a matter of fact, I would get up in the morning, house shoes still on, road still on, going through the day. Maybe not, even though I was up in the morning, maybe I didn't actually start preparing and putting myself together till noon. Then realize, therefore, again, I'm asleep. So even though I wasn't in the physical realm of being asleep, in the mental realm, I was still asleep. I had missed out on the phone calls. Everything that I needed to do because in my in my brain, in my body, in the physical realm, I was woke, but mentally I was asleep. So I learned this thing called priming your morning. 
priming your morning literally consists of positive things that you need for the day. Is it, I need to see amazing sunshine. I think most people in my home don't, don't understand this of me, is that in order for me to output excellence, I love to see sun. Sun equates a way out. Even looking into a window, it's like it's so bright. So for me, I like to be bright. I need to get to the sun. I need to hear positivity in the morning time because guess what? The devil is waiting on you as soon as. Forget when your eyes open. It's literally when you come out of the sleep and you decide, I'm about to wake up, he's already there. Especially if he knows there's something that's amazing that's in your future. It's something amazing in what you're supposed to do. He's right there to put a level of doubt in the brain. So I had to start learning to protect that space. Literally, by from the time in which I slept to sleep, making sure I was affirming things in the brain, I am great, I am amazing, and then go to sleep. Then wake up in the morning with that same thought, I am great, I am amazing, and then get to the sun. Oh, my God, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be a day. So, therefore, who gets to talk to you in the morning? Who gets to inject into the brain, into the spirit in the morning? Became everything. Because I used to wake up in the morning with, I can't. You know what? I have small children and taking myself way back to the I can't. I have small children and I can't get up in the morning. You know, I can't give the most level of excellence because I have all these things that are going on and I don't have what they have. So without realizing, I was priming myself with everything of I can't, expecting can midday. Couldn't happen. So, let's tell you what the devil decided to get me this morning. He decided to, while I woke up, we go to sleep. Me and my husband go to sleep. He's found the station for us to sleep that literally rain and thunder. I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to go with it because we know how important these, these time frames are. I'm going to go with it and I'm going to try it. Then I realized, oh, my God, I was so narcoleptic sleep that sometimes I would forget the day. <laughs> like, literally that much sleep. And I used to wear a Fitbit that would tell me how I was sleeping and told me I literally would wake up every 15 to 20 minutes, which truly is not getting into REM sleep. That means I'm always up thinking, eyes blinking, movie playing in the head. However, when I started to do this, I was able to fully get rest because when the body repairs itself, when does the body repair? It repairs in rest. So I was missing that. So when I get up this morning, because now I'm in this deep narcoleptic sleep, here was a trick. I know what the trick was? Steve Harvey Morning Show this morning was talking about the election, the negatives of the election, the racist stuff that's going on, all the negative. And I, before I opened my eyes, had already been primed to have an attitude. Already. I, I hadn't even got about the bed. I hadn't even opened my eyes. But already, because when we switched that off, that was the next thing, I was listening. Even though I was out of agitation, my eyes weren't even up until you when my eyes opened what it was that I was hearing. And then when I got up, I had a slight attitude. Now, normally when I get up in the morning, I'm the one that walks down the hallway, hey, good morning, hey, whatever. My baby, my 13-year-old is the one that will lay in the bed the longest, and it gets on my nerves. But because when I wake up in the morning and I'm already in intention of being happy and seeing sunshine, I never saw the sunshine. The room was still dark. So guess who is? Get up. I don't even speak like that in the morning. Get up. You not say get up. Okay, guess what? You got one more time before I come in there. There's going to be an attitude. And this is this morning. That is not my morning. That is not how I am. However, I missed the cue to decide I will have an amazing morning. And literally missing that started to move everything around this morning. And then I'm walking around, I got to I'm stepping over stuff. I see things in my home that maybe make me frustrated. I'm walking around. And then I had to remember, I am tired. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, stop, rewind, go back. You have to deliver this morning. Oh, devil got you. 
You have to deliver this morning something absolutely amazing. And in order to deliver something amazing, yes, you have to be. You have to see sunshine. You have to see positivity. You have to, in order to output that, there has to be a decision that goes before that. So I had to sit here and I had to go back and I had to stare out the window and I had to listen to music. Even the music being on in the background is something that I didn't necessarily have to have, but it's here literally to support my decision of being upbeat. If you stop and you listen, I decided I'm going to be upbeat this morning. I don't know what they're saying. But literally, literally, the rhythm of what's going on is upbeat. And I know the eye of the tiger comes through decision. So I had to get that back together. I had a long output of a day today. And having that long output of a day today literally has to come from my decision. So I was so happy that it happened. So literally this morning, I sat here. I got my coffee. I did my prayer. I'm off. I'm reading right now a book. I decided to sit here and prime and slow breathe and make decisions and say, it doesn't matter what you heard, your decision, your decision, the direction in which you decide to go is where you go. So we have two different ways in which we decide to deal with things. We decide to deal with things, and, and please pay attention to the word choice. We decide to deal with things through pleasure and pain. You decide, you have two choices. When people ask me, how did I lose weight? It was through a decision of pain. Devastating, can't, can't, can't stand to see. Look in the mirror to the side and it was just like, I can't, I'm about to be 300 pounds. I can't, I can't. However, my decision at one point in time said, hey, from this pain, I have to decide this is it. Because if I don't decide this is it, there is no matter anybody coming to me saying, hey, Tracy, you got to pick this one up. You got to do this. It's going to happen because my decision didn't align. So pre-making the decision that I'm tired, guess what? I decided I wasn't tired. I decided I was okay. I decided, you know what? I'm just going to be all right. Okay, hey, you sick. How many of us do that? Hey, guess what you are? You sick. I made that decision. But then at one point, I decided to use the pain that was there and say, if you do not stop this, if you do not stop this, this is where you're going to be. It's literally the decisions you make. No one, no one gains in a day. No one loses in a day. But my everyday decision put me in a situation where I had too much on me. Every day. And until I had owned up to it and said, hey, this is what you decided, boo. This is not what happened. Nothing happens. You decide. Nothing. I decided to keep picking the phone. I decided to eat two pork chops. I decided don't work out. I decided no water today. Although of my decision, I had to own up to them. They were all mine. So I decided forget pain because guess what? Pain is a motivating factor, people. Pain will make you slap the stew out of somebody. Pain will make you curse somebody out. <laughs> Just so you understand, pain produces things. But your decision behind it, the meaning that you give it is everything, everything. So I decided, hey, I need to have some pleasure in my life. I need to be excited. So I need to decide this situation that is causing me pain has to bring me pleasure. It's a decision. So I'll, I'll ask you in this moment to stop. How many things that are around you right now are you saying are happening? Let's equate it to the business. How many things in your business right now are just happening? How many? I wake up in the morning, I see my e-suite. Um, oh my God, it's happening. I knew it. I knew when we got to the season, everything was gonna be horrible. I knew it, it's happening. It's happening. 
No, I knew when I walked past her this morning and I said something to my teammate. I knew she was going to be crazy. I knew she was going to say something stupid. I knew it. It's happening. How many things are happening? Guess what? They're not. Literally everything that you decide is what you choose to focus on. It's what you choose. When we look at a movie, and I say this all the time, so I'm going to say it again. When we watch movies, have you ever heard a movie? Okay, look at you one that I love, Wonder Woman. It's an amazing movie. The new Wonder Woman, amazing, right? How many of y'all agree? Amazing. Made me feel powerful. I'm going to do everything. Even when I was young, y'all, I thought I was Wonder Woman, and I tied something on my back with a pole and jumped off my garage. I broke my arm. And I thought I was Wonder Woman. So it was amazing to me. Imagine what physical, oh, we, it was amazing. I used to twirl. I was Linda Carter. You could tell me anything, right? But I was sitting in my salon one day. Somebody had the nerve to tell me Wonder Woman, it was horrible. How? How? Did y'all see her jump? Did y'all see how powerful she was? If you saw the movie, all the her jumping off from building to building, her as a woman, she was hearing me roar, like, oh, my God. You want to know what the person who said it was horrible? I said, how? Why? It wasn't enough men in the room. It was too dark in the beginning of the movie. The sound, I don't know if the sound quality was right. Wow. Do you see how two same position. We both watching the same movie, but this person chose to see, chose to focus on everything that was going wrong. I was like, oh my God, I didn't even see that. Did you see how um, in one scene in the movie, she didn't even have on an earring? She didn't have on an earring? How you see that when she was jumping from the buildings? I didn't see none of that. All I saw was lights, camera, action, boom. She ran around. She beating a man. How did you How did you see the earring? How did you see the darkness? I think it was supposed to be dark in that part. But you, somewhere in your life, recreated dark with being horrible. So in those moments where they were trying to tell a story, you saw dark. And I was like, wow, that further supports what you focus on is literally your reality. It's what you think. Because I know Wonder Woman is amazing. But for you, you missed it all because you were looking at the earring missing, the darkness, and not enough men in the movie. So let me ask you this right now. When you focus, how do you see your movie? How do you see your life? Do you focus on everything that you don't have when you wake up in the morning? Do you focus on what you do have? Do you focus on opportunity is amazing and it's in front of me and that's what I'm going to go after because I deserve it. Every morning I wake up, that's what I deserve. Or do you excuse, you know what? I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. You know what? I don't have a million dollar business. You know what? I haven't been in this business for 20 years. You know what? I haven't been in this company as this long. Is that your focus? Is that it? When you log into and you see eSuite, do you see how much more you have to go to get to the goal? Or do you see how far you are away from it? Literally what you choose to focus on is your life. Your perception is your reality. However, it may not be the reality of someone else. So I'm going to do this great and amazing exercise with you, and I love to do it. So if you've been on any of my seminars or if you've heard me speak before, you've probably done this before. And so if so, don't tell somebody if you're sitting next to them. Let them experience the exact same thing. I'll say, focus. We're going to do an exercise. I want you to look around in your home. Quickly, I want you to look around and find everything, even if you're driving. Find everything that's blue. Quick, go. You have 10 seconds. Blue, keep going. Count everything. Stop. Close your eyes.
Put all those blue things in your eyes. Close your eyes. If you're driving, please don't close your eyes. Think. <laughs> oh, no. I don't need that on my heart. <laughs> if you drive and think all the blue things, keep thinking of them. Count them on up. Count them. If you're home, close your eyes and count them. All the blue things. You got them? You got all of them? Because it's a whole bunch of them, right? All right. Open your eyes. Now, tell me everything in your house brown. Tell me now. Don't look. What are they? Table, chairs, my skin. <laughs> Don't tell me out loud. <laughs> so, in this exercise, how many of you were so focused on all the blue things that when it came to me asking you about the brown, you couldn't, you don't, you have no idea? Think about that. How many times do you get up in the morning, you say, oh, shoot, this is where I'm going. This is what I got to do today. I don't want to go do this today. This is not what I want to do. Literally, when you do that, when you focus on that, that's your day. That's who you are. If you get up in the morning and say, I can't be. From this exercise, I want you to remember how many things when you, when I told you to go for brown, if I told you to go for blue, you were looking for it. So if you in the morning get up and you prime yourself and you say, today is going to be a horrible day, guess what? You out here looking for horrible. I know she's horrible. I know she's going to say this. I know this is about to be this. I know this. Because guess what? That's what you focused on. You focused on today was going to be horrible from the moment you woke up. Hey, guess what? I'm going to be a president. If I said right now, next month you're going to be presidential, what dropped into your brain? What happened? Did you go, yes, I'm about to do this? If you do, everything around you, you're going to focus on being unpresidential. But if your brain right now said, I'm shit tripping, that is not next month, guess what? Everything around you will be that. It's literally in here, that short space in here of what we focus on, of what we call to ourselves. Now, do you choose to focus on pleasure or do you choose to focus on pain? It's a choice. When people say, how do I do it? I need you to tell me how. I need you to push me too. I remember coaching this one woman that was um, in her business. Every time she pulled on up, she didn't want to go in. She was like, Trace, you got to get me past this point. I, every time I pull up, I don't want to go there. And I'm like, why? She's like, because everybody in there gets on my nerves. My payroll ain't going right. They don't dress right when they come to work. They always are negative. They always are doing this. And I was like, oh. She was like, so you got to get me past this. And I was like, okay. Let me get you past this? She said, yeah. I said, okay. Your payroll is amazing. Remember when you went through everything you did and you could actually payroll, payroll's amazing. Remember how, remember when it was when you were sitting around and you were in the space and nobody was in your business and now it's full? Your employees are amazing. You have them. You have payroll. When you drive on up, you know this car that you have in? And she has a range. You know this car, this range you're driving? You didn't have it at one time. This Range Rover is amazing. You don't rent your location. You own it. <laughs> oh, my God, it's amazing. And then she was like, but it's not. I said, yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. I said, change your words. Say it with me. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, now say it again. Yes, it is. No, say it again. Yes, it is. We did this exercise for 45 minutes to the point where we got to the end and she was crying. And she was like, oh, my God, it is. Oh, my God, I, I, I didn't even realize how hard it was for me to get what I have. I forgot. I, oh, my God, like, literally, maybe they are just acting that way because I don't talk to them. Like, when I come in in the morning time, I don't talk to these women. So maybe if I talk to them more, maybe it would be better. By the time we got to the exercise, guess who was starting to say positive things about her business? Guess whose business changed? 
Like we kept going through it. She wanted to give me extra money for coaching her through, thinking I had did something absolutely more amazing than what she was. And she said, Tracy, how, how did you do this? So I didn't. From the very first beginning when we started these exercises, you were telling me how horrible it was. Now you're telling me how amazing it is. So everything I ingested, you were ready for the profit and loss. You were ready for the marketing plan. You were ready because from your mind, everything was amazing. Everything you, everything I threw into it, you were primed for amazing. So I'll tell you right now, if you do not prime, everything that comes to you from a level of excellence, from a level of amazing, even when it isn't, if you don't start there, it'll never get there. Never. Ever. It can't. How many times have you woke up with a bad morning and it stayed that way? It doesn't just happen. You don't get up in the morning and you have a good morning and it's happening. You don't go to bed at night and I'm having a good morning. I'm having a good evening and it's happening. Oh my God, I'm ambassador. It happens. Oh my God, I am making five figures. It happens. Does not work that way. Everything is a decision. It's an everyday decision, a deciding factor that pushes you towards the direction in which you're going. It's your decision. This is what I tell my team all the time. Team and calling people. They are not picking up the phone. They ain't on no zones. They ain't doing this. They ain't doing that. They ain't doing that. And I'm like, guess what? They're not. They're not gonna ever do it. Wanna know why? Because that's the only thing we have to talk about. Tell me how great they are. What have they done lately? Tell me what's going on in their life. Tell me why they joined. Are you pushing them to it? Tell me why you joined. Tell me why your EC is great. Tell me why you love a retreat. Tell me why everything that's going on is going amazing. Guess what? Let me tell you the biggest problem. Five fingers. Point the finger back at you. Because everything you prime your business with, baby, it's not golden. It's not. People who have golden businesses, people who have golden mind frames, people who are successful prime from a place of excellence. They decide from a place of ex excellence. They focus from a place of excellence. Everyone that's doing something excellent made a decision. Everyone that's not doing something amazing made a decision. But too many times we look outward and think that it's out there. It's in the abysmal space. Literally when I wake up, it's a deciding factor. People even have the mistake of saying, God didn't want me to have a great day today. Absolutely not. You were made from his image. So that is not what he decided. God will match your efforts. He will not create them. It is your deciding decisions, everything you do, of what God can show up with you or not. Did you bring him along with you today? Did you ask him for his grace today? Did you ask him to change my mind frame today? Because see, if that doesn't occur, nothing else can occur. Nothing from that space. Everything in your life will continue to happen. So I came up with these three things. I was like, what three things? can make a pivotal change for somebody. Because sometimes when you tell them, hey, these 15 things you got to do, it's like, oh, that's a long list. So I'm going to give you three, just three, three pillars of what they are. Number one, to make a change in your life, you have to decide. You have to decide, hey, what is my outcome? What do I want? What do I desire? Do you know that when you ask people what you want, usually they don't know? They have no clue. Even something as simple as dinner. Baby, have you ever asked your husband, baby, what you want? And he's like, I have no idea. How many people walk up to McDonald's and look at the same McDonald's, y'all, Big Mac number one? <laughs> it ain't changed, 40 years old, still number one. But we'll walk up to it and look at it and go, hmm. I don't know. Decide. What's the outcome? Where am I going? Is number one. 
If you don't know where you're going, you can't make a decision to align everything behind it literally because you have no idea. No, where am I going? What is my outcome? What do I want out of my life? What if I told you you could plan it, but you got to know where you're going? You can't say, I want to be successful. That's not enough. What is success to you? What is it? What does it entail? If you don't know those bullet points, that's the problem. We're literally at the beginning of the problem is because it's in here. When you decide what you want, you have to be precise. Even when they tell you in prayer. Don't just say, God, help me. Help me, Jesus. I need you. God is looking down going, for what? What do I need to help you with? I need you to help me be a better woman. Okay, what is being a better woman? I need you to help me be a better woman when I see people, when I talk to people, when I get up, when I get dressed. Help me be a better woman with my finances. Help me be a better woman and be a better wife. Help me be a better mom. Help me understand what being better is. See, the more precise you get, the more detailed you get, the more you get it because you're calling it to action. You're saying, I want to be great isn't enough because your version of great and my version of great are two totally different things. You have to decide what that means to you. What are you going to do with it? I want to be successful and it works is not enough. I want to be diamond. I'll say that because I see that everywhere. I want to be diamond. You want to want me to say how you're going to get to diamond? You want to tell me how you're going to get to diamond? What you're going to say is, I want to be diamond, and I need this many people in the box. I need to call this many people to get them as distributors. I have to fill every 400 box. I have to get up every morning intentional to get those boxes filled. And when those boxes are not filled, I'm going to be positive to get it done. See, that's how you're going to get it done. Because those precise little things, number one, you got to know what you want. You have to break it down and be precise. You have to then put it into action. You got to go get it done. Those are all the things required. So when you see someone being successful and they are diamond, guess what? They did all things. They decided. They decided. They knew what they wanted. They went after it. They stayed positive with it. They broke it down into small micros of everything they wanted to have done, and they accomplished it. And guess what? They celebrated it. Now, I kept moving. Celebrated it. And then realized, in order to keep going, I have to do it all over again. I can't sit here. So now when I want to go to the next level, I have to do it again. I have to know what my outcome is. I have to decide what it is. I have to stay positive. I have to put things down on paper. Then I take those things off paper. I have to get them into action, and then they have to go. Literally, it's a decision. Let me show you something right here with this decision. Have you ever been having to argue with somebody? And then argue, I mean, deep in it, saying words off the handle. Blah, 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 blah. Did you know in the middle of that argument, if you made the decision in the middle and said, What's my outcome? Let's say you're arguing with your best friend or your husband or your child, somebody who means something to you. But you're in the middle and you're saying all things, not Jesus, all things. But if you stopped and you made a decision at that moment and you said, you know, what's my outcome here? What am I trying to get? Am I trying to stay married? Do I want to hurt my daughter? Um, what's my outcome? Literally, I just want them to know that I'm hurt. That's all I want. I don't mean it. Okay, you know what? Stop, stop, stop. I'm sorry. I'm just hurt. Look at how that can change where that's about to go. Literally from that decision because we're jumping off of a cliff here. We're not going where I want to go. But most people keep arguing literally to prove the point. Literally just because I got to win. I just want to argue. I'm going to win this. Even at the cost of hurting somebody, I just got to win. 
But if you stopped in the middle and you made your decision, because I'm showing you how power your, powerful your brain is, how powerful your decisions are. If you stopped in the middle and you decided, this is going too far, what is my outcome? What do I want? I want to keep this together. I just want them to know I'm hurt. If you say that, that decision, where would that go? Where would it go? Where would it be? And that's how powerful your decision is. Your decision. You arguing with somebody? Here, let me show you another one. I'm about to get in an argument. They're arguing. They're going off the handle. I love them. I won't. Shut up. Literally, I could take you out with every word that I have, but I decided to, because I love you so much. Not today. Because I know my outcome is to keep this relationship longer than today. Decide. Number two, commit. Hey, man, once you decide, you can be a punk about it. You want to stay there. I made this decision to be in this marriage. I made this decision to have this friendship. I made this decision to be in this business. Hey, I gave up so much. I need to commit to it. Fear kills people. Every day, fear. Fear. But guess what? Fear is a decision. When you look on up and you say, let's just talk about a lie. Uh, every time I hit the button, to go on, I just clam up and I, and I just can't, I can't, I can't, I don't, I don't want to, I can't post this, I can't do this, I don't want to talk to them, I just, I can't, I don't know, other people have it, I don't, I just don't, I just, I can't, I mean, I don't know, maybe this business isn't for me, maybe it's for everybody else, maybe they're making money and I just, I can't, it's literally your decision, because guess the other decision you can make, let me show you how to quick flip a decision. I know when I hit this button, I'm normally nervous, but I'm not going to be today. Everybody out here that's making five figures is what I want. I can do it too. I can. All I have to do is hit the button because they're hitting the button. And if I hit the button, I can too. Click. It's on now. Hey, y'all. I'm a little nervous today. You know, I, I don't. I, I wasn't going to be okay, but literally I'm here, so I know that if I show up every single day, I'm deciding if I show up and I do this and I show you my copyanda <laughs> that I'm using and I'm deciding to use, I'm going to get past this because I made the decision when I decided that I was coming here, that I was going to get to the top. I was going to be with my children at home. Nobody was going to pull me out of that. Nobody. I love this. This is what I do. So guess what? I make the decision that forget fear. It is not here. The fear is my decision. I decided to be scared. So guess what? I decide to not be scared. I decide to click the button. I decide to make the phone call. I decide my choice, what I want to do. There's power in that. That's what I decided to do. So I'm going to commit to it. In order to be able to commit to something, you have to be willing to cut off all other possibilities. You can't go into something saying, okay, I'm fearful that I'm, I'm going to press this button, but if I don't press the button, then I'm going to go to work and I'm going to try tomorrow. Say that. Can't do that. You don't want to be fearful? Press the button. No net. No, if I don't hit it, it's not going to happen. You have to erase that. Decision. But what you do is say, oh, no, it's, it's just my anxiety. It's just my depression. It's just my frustration. Well, you decided that. You decided I get to be frustrated. So if I hit this button and I don't, guess what? And the more you do it and the more you keep hitting the button and the more you're frustrated and the more you have anxiety with it, the more you condition your brain that when you hit the button, it is frustrating. And it was your repetitive decision. But let me give you power in this. Your repetitive decision to hit the button regardless. I'm going to hit that button regardless. First time, it looked like this. Woo! Okay, I'm left. Second time, okay, I'm left. Third time, okay, I'm left. First time, okay, I'm left. Uh, okay, I'm left. Yo, I'm left. And I'm hurt. So people say, oh, my God, you do that with such ease. I did not start there. 
<laughs> it was a couple times of hitting that button going, but I can't see nobody out there, and I don't know if they like me, and I don't know if they do whatever, but I got to hit the button because if I don't keep hitting the button, I'm not going to have a career. <laughs> so hit the button. Hit the button. Hit the button. Be dope. Take power back. Say this is what I'm going to do. That got developed. That didn't just happen. I didn't come out the womb like this. Nobody does. They're constant decisions over and over and over. They're constant decisions. They're constant commitment. Every single day is what does it. Every day. You want to know how to lose weight? You want to know how to lose weight? Every day. You work on it. It's that simple. You want to know how to be great? Every day you decide you want to be great. And then the days that you feel frustrated, you remember your decision. I decided I was going to be great. Then you commit the action behind it every single day. Fear is one of the biggest traps we can have. Fear of rejection. Want to know how to get rid of rejection? Don't care. Talk to a room of zero. Because <laughs> it does not change what you have to say being great. Fear of rejection? Don't care. Fear of failure? Replace it with, what if I'm better? I don't want to fail. I don't want to fail. I don't want to fail. But what if you're great at it? That decision, that thing that goes on in the mind right there is literally is going to take you to your positive or your negative. It's your decision. You are powerful. You are great. You is great. You are powerful. That's who you are. Remember, image, who you're made from, Right? Right? How could you be less than? But if you don't attach that failure to that, I am, I am, I am attached to the most powerful on high. I cannot lose. And I know that. But if you don't know that, you can't. And it's literally because you didn't decide. You didn't attach to. You didn't say, I am attached to the powerful up most high. Every day, even when things come in your brain and they ain't right, you got to step back, prime, fall back, remember where I come from. Did you know failure is education? Did you know that? We only put weight in what we do well, but forget, hey, let me take something as simple as this keto coffee. When I first did it, I thought it was horrible. I, I made it and I was like, yo, this is nasty. I don't know what y'all talking about. Y'all, it works people not. Y'all liars. Seriously, y'all just trying to sell some coffee. But then I talked to Desiree and she said, did you call me and ask me how to make that before you did it? I said, no, I just literally did it. So now we know how to make keto coffee. Guess how I made my keto coffee? I put some almond milk in it, stirred it up, and drank it. And I didn't blend it down, y'all. I stirred it. <laughs> I went over there and I stirred it. And I I took a whole hip heap and uh, oh my god. And I was like, y'all liars. So at that moment. If I never came back and I listened, if I was at that moment a failure, because I was a failure, that was an X, no more keto, I would have missed out on what this coffee is doing to me. It's changing me. So then what I had to do is I had to insert this amazing thing called flexibility and say, hey, maybe I did it wrong. Okay, I'm going to do it. Oh, you can't use the almond milk, but you can pour it on in. Then you need a flavor enhancer, and then you need to put it in the blender. You need to stir it heavy. You need to get a frother. you got to blend that down. Oh, okay. Let me go back again. Tasted that bad boy. I don't even drink coffee, yo. I don't even do it. <laughs> and now it's, I have to have it every morning, even before I talk to y'all. I got to have it. But guess what? That came from failure. Like, literally where I got to was because I decided 
oh, wow, okay, maybe I did it wrong, maybe I was wrong, maybe I need to get back in the race and do it again. If not, I wouldn't have known. This was absolutely amazing, and it's helping me to maintain and also lose my weight. But if I had that fear that said, I am not going back, if I had attached fear to that and said, no, because I don't trust you, because I don't believe you, and y'all liars, man, and I didn't do it, do you see how I block everything else that's on the other side of that? Fear teaches you, sometimes with the beauty, beauty in it, is that fear, it too teaches you what you don't want. It teaches you, oh, my God, take the roadblock. See, when going through life and also going through weight loss, so I'll talk about both, life and weight loss, what we want is I made a great decision, so I'm going to post. I'm going to go. I decided I'm going to lose weight, so when I get on the scale, it's going to say one pound gone, two pound gone, three pound gone, four pounds gone, five, and it's just going to keep going. What we get screwed is when it starts doing like this. But guess what? That's how it goes. See, when you know the rules of engagement, then you deal with it better. We all know that, right? So when you're talking to a customer and they expect it to come off in two seconds, you know the rules of engagement, right? You know that's not how it happens. So what do you tell them? Hey, babe, try again. Hey, let's try a little different. Let's be flexible. Let's move it around. Because, man, maybe we don't need to do a wrap. Maybe we should do the coffee. Maybe we should do a thermal fight. Maybe we should do a fat fighter. Because guess what? You have learned through education, through, through your own levels of failure, that if you get back in and you try it a little different, it changes. See how you're talking about it all the time? It changes. But then when it comes to life, it has to be the straight and narrow. Oh, my God, I hit a roadblock. I'm not doing it right. Okay, let me try it again. Oh, my God, it's not going right. When in all actuality, when you commit, oh, my God, it's not going right. Okay, all right, I need to go to the left. Video game. Okay, now I need to jump the hurdle. We all play them. Okay, now I need to conceal. Now I'm in hiding. Now I'm looking around, trying to figure out where I'm supposed to go. Okay, I'm supposed to go over here. Like, literally, that's life. But if you know the rules of engagement and you understand that they're hurdles, and guess what? When you get to a hurdle, let's, uh, let's everybody do it a little fast. When you get to a hurdle, what do you do? Jump. Now, if you get to a hurdle and it's something at the top and it's something at the bottom and you can't jump, what do you do? Duck. <laughs> Go over it. Go under it. Now, space is on the side. Guess what? They can block out the top and the bottom. Where do we go? You go through the side. <laughs> You get it, regardless. How relentless are you in your life with that hurdle? How relentless are you? Do you get to the hurdle and stop? Do you get to the hurdle and jump? If you can't jump, do you notice underneath? I could go underneath. I can go to the side. I can go to the other side. You ever played the game, what is it, dodgeball or whatever when we were kids, and then you're doing like this, and you're trying to get around? Like, we learned this as kids. We learned it. But then when we get older, we forget it. Everything's supposed to be perfect now. So as soon as I get to a hurdle, I forget the common thing that I did in dodgeball. Move. Go away. Run. Like, literally, all those things are part of life. Which brings me to the last and final thing is resolve. What am I going to get from what my decisions are? If I decide I don't want to, in creating your why, these are literally the three things you got to ask yourself. What's my resolve? Like, what am I going to get when I get it? Do you even know? Like, if I ask you right now, hey, I want to be a millionaire. Okay, great. Why? What is it? Like, why do you want to be a millionaire? What have you equated with being a millionaire as being so freaking great? Do you even know? Or is it just to say, what does it mean? What is it going to do for you? Is it really enough to live off of? For, the, for what you have in your brain, is it really enough? Is it really 5 million? Is it 10 million? What is it? Do you know? If you don't, you need to know. Because if you don't know, what, say for instance, something as simple as being in this business, 
if you don't know what it's going to do for you and you're attaching it to everybody else and there's no reason for you, you have not resolved what this is going to do for you, you won't stay. You won't fight. I'll take it over into life. If you don't know why you're married, if you don't know what that person brings to you, if you don't know the big and important thing that they do, you'll lose them. They'll go away. If you have an amazing friend, amazing, you know she's absolutely amazing, but you have not resolved why she's there in your life, why God has brought her to you, why she says what she says, the moment she pisses you off, you're going to make her exit stage left. Literally, because you haven't thought that far. That's really, really, really important to understand why you are doing what you're doing on a deep level. What that means to you. Taking inventory of the things that are around me. Now, let me tell you, when you put all three of these together, how amazing your life is going to be because you decided it, you put it into action, you know what it means for you. Let me tell you the level of power that you're going to get with that. When someone says, so say for instance, you're saying, I want to be a millionaire because I know I get to pay off my home. I'm going to pay for my kids' college. I have done the financial work, and I know I can take care of myself now from where I am in my age for the rest of my life even though I don't know how people think they're going to make it off a million for the rest of their life because it's not boss. But maybe that's what you didn't thought, thunk. You didn't thought it, you didn't thought it, so it's actually really there for you, right? When someone asks you, say, for instance, you're about to do your business. When someone asks me something simple as, you know you don't want to do this, how do you keep going? Well, because I've decided, I've committed, and I've resolved it. So if somebody asks me right now, Tracy, Hey, girl, we're going to breakfast this morning. Does that fit? Does breakfast fit in there? Huh? No, it doesn't. Sorry, can't. Got to go do this because I know this is one piece of the puzzle of where I'm going. This is a piece of it. Can't do it. Okay, well, it's time to call customers. I'm feeling a little anxious right now. I really don't want to do it because every time I do it, it doesn't get this. But my resolve says, hey, but you don't call these customers. Your whole tail going to be broken. You're going to get towards where you need to go. And then you're going to have to start all the way on over. Huh, bump that. Hit the button. Hey, girl. How you doing? Because you connected all three of those together and you understand why you're doing what you're doing and what it really, really means. See, if you have not connected all three, if you haven't decided, which is number one, if you haven't taken that and said, hey, this is what I'm going to do, if you haven't committed daily, if you don't have the resolve, the level of inventory of what this means, those three things, every single time, you don't have an issue. It's not going to be what you want. And then that's when life happens. That's when it keeps happening to you. That's when anxiety comes. That's when the stress comes. That's when the depression comes. That's when the doubt comes. And it's literally because you didn't realize you were the controlling factor. You think life happens. It doesn't. It's literally pulling it by the horn, and it's making sound decisions for yourself, being flexible. Don't be so tunnel vision that maybe somebody's trying to push you in a different direction. And actually, maybe it makes sense. But because I did it and this is how it is, this is how I'm going to stay. Because then that's literally ignorance. That's what ignorance is. It's not necessarily here. It's not being flexible to be able to make a decision, not jumping the hurdle, understanding, hey, maybe I can do it this way. See, best thing in business is when people do not have a business plan. Business plans screw people because of the word association. Plan means I have set one, two, three, four, five, and if it does not happen in one, two, three, four, five, it's wrong. Scrap plan. But literally changing the second word by map, we all know what maps are. Maps go like this. They move around. They change. Oh, okay. Anybody ever? Anybody love mazes? You got to go through the maze. 
What do you do when you get to the area of the maze and the block? You come back on out. And you go back around. And you go down. And then you go and you turn. And you go another direction. And then you come back. Get comfortable with the maze. That's all it is. You control the meaning of what everything has in your life. If you get to the roadblock and you remember it's a maze, when you have to go backwards, pain does not become associated with it. You can literally train your brain, of, your brain to say, oh, okay, it's just a hurdle. I just got to go back. Oh, okay. Oh, I see another point of entry. Make it a game. Do you see how it can be different? Not every time I get to a hurdle, oh, my God, I need. Why not you? Instead of saying, oh, my God, why is this happening to me? We all have done it. Why? Take it away. It's not for me. And then we have to turn around and say, well, why not me? Because think about everything. Go back. Turn around. Everything that you jumped over and hurdles that you went through, didn't they produce you now? If you didn't have all that pain, if you didn't have all that pressure, would you be here now? Would you? Most of us know. I'll tell you my amount of pain, my amount of pressure, going through it, staying in it, jumping hurdles, going under it, going around it, not listening to people, talking to empty rooms, keep pressing the button, keep pushing forward. All of that produced this. Do you see it that way? Or do you think in your mind that person... They was born with a silver bone in their, foot, in their mouth. People gave them that. They had, that's easy. Okay, somebody helped them do that. Let's talk, it works. Somebody built their chart. That's why they're doing it. Is that where your brain is? Is that what's in these little four spaces? Is that what's up there? Because literally, this is where it all is starting and ending. It's right in here. So when I put this together and I said the eye of the tiger, I'll ask you this. What did you think about the eye of the tiger? Was that eye of the tiger something you hear of other people? Or is it yourself? Did you see yourself as having the eye of the tiger? Or did you think it was someone else? The eye of the tiger is created. It is not something you're born with. It is not something that is given. It is something that is worked on over and 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 over again. And the reason why I say so many overs is because it still isn't over. Even for myself, for all of us, once people get to the pinnacle of the top, that's the most dangerous place in the world. Because then they go, like, oh, my God, I'm trying to get to this place where I arrive. Guess what? Goals? When people said goals, it's literally nothing about the goal. It's not reaching the goal. It's everything in you that has to be put together to reach the goal. In order to get it, it takes a lot. It's a lot of decisions. It's a lot of committing. It's a lot of all. And you go stronger. You go harder. You get to a specific level, and then you got to go up higher? You wonder what happens to people? They put the pain in place of the pleasure. So now when I get up here, guess what? Anybody that is retained, I heard every, I heard a lot of people saying this. So let me hit you with this. Whew. I used to be here. I used to have. $200,000 in sales, so nobody think I'm talking about them directly. $200,000 in sales. I used to do this. I used to do this. I used to have that. You want to know what happened to you? You want to know what happened? You got to the top, and you associated it with pain. You said, oh, my God, this, I can't. I don't want to go through that again. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to do that. So guess what's happening? You roll them backwards. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I'm literally far away from it. But literally, when you get to the top, that's why I said it's the hardest place to be. Once you get to the top, game over. 
start again. You are freshmen. <laughs> you fresh meat. You're a freshman. You know what it is to be a freshman. Penny's getting thrown at you, boo. And you're like, hold on. But I am. You're still in the mind of an eighth grader, boo. You're a freshman again. Then you go through high school, even to be a senior, and you out here like, yo, remember that? Then you get to college, and they be like, oh, you're a freshman. <laughs> you do these things all the time, but then you forget. When I come out into real life, you don't understand when you're a freshman again. So once you become successful, put the meaning behind it. Celebrate. Don't celebrate too long. Don't celebrate forever. Because now you got your tuition payments. <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> now it's time to do it again. Now you are a freshman. Who is you? Where are you right now? Who is you? Maybe you're just in the place that you're a freshman. Maybe you're in the place where you were a senior and not realizing you're a freshman <laughs> again. Maybe you at the very beginning and you were a freshman and you decided to be a sophomore, but you love all the complacencies of the freshman. And it's time to be a sophomore. But you got to decide and you thinking, oh, my God, I'm just going to be a sophomore. No, ma'am. Let's equate this one over here. I'm a distributor. I want to be an executive. Did you decide you want to be an executive? Did you put all the actions behind being an executive? Did you sign two people? Do you think it's going to happen? No, ma'am. Not going to happen until your action, your commitment, your resolve happen. Let me take you higher. Let me hit y'all in the belt. Triple. Love y'all, boo. You had a triple. And you're like, I've been charted. And I want to tell y'all, I've been talking your story. I've been charted for president so numerous times. Numerous times. You want to know why you're not presidential? Because you decided it was hard. You saw that hurdle, you walked at it, and you forgot how to hurdle. You've been hurdling all this time. Are you ducking the way you used to? Are you jumping? Are you going around it? Or did you get to the hurdle now and decide it, the mountain is too high? So then you move back. And you decided I need to be okay with where I am right now. This is all I have. Okay, I've gotten to as, as far as I can go. I want you to understand, literally, it's your decision. It's your decision. Are you putting the actions behind it the way you used to? Did you put pain in place of success? Okay, well, I don't want to go out to all the parties no more. I don't want to call all these people no more. I don't want somebody on my team to hurt me. No, nope, I, ain't, I ain't putting myself back in that again. Is that what you did? It didn't just happen. I just want you to understand it was your decision. In order to come out of it, you got to do these three things. You have to decide this is not where I want to be any longer. You have to put actions behind it. You got to write that thing out. Because now you're at the top of the hill. And remember I said that's the most dangerous place to be. It's dangerous. You could fall off the cliff. Falling off the cliff, if you're at the very bottom of the cliff and you fall, it's a knee bruise. Falling off the cliff at that area, you could die. So you got to ask yourself, do I want to die? Do I want to stay right here? Is this what I want? What's your options? Remember I said you got to take the net away. So if your net is sitting there, okay, I will just be double. How? How are, you, how are you comfortable with going under where you are? How? Not okay. But if you take that net away and you turn back around and you look at that hill and you remember, I am the freshman. You put the meaning behind it differently. I did this before. I can do it again. I know all the things that other people don't know. I remember. When I look back over my story, I remember what it was. I understand this. I got it. 
I could do it. You change the meaning. You change the words. You change the pressure. You keep going before you know it. Remember I told y'all about that roller coaster, that that it takes will be nobody will be able to stop that. And it's literally because you decided, you committed, you resolved. So I hope you all enjoyed today. <laughs> My husband go, mm. hope y'all enjoyed today. This is what I do. I remember being nervous and scared to speak in front of people. I did. I remember when this was, I used to be the shy girl. Could y'all believe that? I did. I used to be the shy girl sitting in the room, but at some point in time, I had to decide I am locking myself out of stuff. The more I don't talk, the more I don't do, guess what? I can't. And it's because I won't. It has nothing to do with none of y'all. Y'all don't even know this in my head. No, nobody knew I was shy. I would come around and I would smile. I was, and this is how it happened in high school. I was prom queen, um, captain of cheerleading, out here choreographing, modeling techniques, doing all of this. But in my, nobody knew what was in my dang old head. They saw me different. But it wasn't until I made the decision that said, I'm tired of this. <laughs> From pain became. I'm just not sick of this. This isn't what I want. This is what I deserve. Yeah, hey, man, I want to be on out here. And then I hit a new roadblock. Wait. <laughs> and then it was like, that's the one thing I can't do. I'm great in business. My businesses are quadrupling. Um, people are asking me to speak everywhere. But guess what? I didn't want to speak because I didn't like what I saw. So I was like, dang, another hurdle. How am I going to get over it? Goodness gracious. Cried every morning going to that dang on gym. Every morning. 90 days. 90. <laughs> it ain't 21 days to create a habit. Somebody lied. It's 21 days just to start it. It's not, not, it's not 21. You don't get it after three weeks. Huh. You fool. But if you don't understand the rules of engagement, you're like, oh, my God, every time I get three weeks, it's not working. And it's literally because you don't understand. That was three weeks to start. Anybody ever did Shanti's workouts in Sanity? Anybody ever did that? And if in the beginning of the movie, you are literally drenched. And he has the nerve to say that was the warm-up. The warm-up? But then when I start putting that on over into life, it was like, okay. When I start putting that over into life, start realizing literally when you get to the pressure, when you get to the pain, that's the warm-up. That's the warm-up. That's it. That's all you've done was warmed up. But literally knocking over it, doing that's where the work begins. Is anybody done? Shanti, that's why I do Shanti, and that's why I love him so much. He's like, oh, we've got here? This is where the work begins. <laughs> well, I'm dead. <laughs> but I love it because I started to take those things over into life. This is where the work begins. Right here. I should send that part to him. <laughs> like, this is where it is. So literally, I know so much of us, I feel the pain of the team. I do. So much of I had that. I feel it. It's on me. It's, it's heavy. It's thick. You walk in, can't even cut it with a butter knife. It's that thick. However, I want you to understand this is where the work begins. That's all we are. That's where we are. That's all of where you are. Now decide different. That's all. Make that decision. Stop asking people how you do it. It's you. You. How you do it is you. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You. Every face that's on here can do it. If they make the decision, if they commit to it, and they resolve, they can. Did you have a tune in?